All right, it's gin and tonic time. Gin and tonic, seriously? You're gonna make a video on how to make a gin and tonic? Yes, I am. You grab your gin, you grab your tonic, pour it into a glass, boom. Got yourself a gin and tonic. Now, in all seriousness, I will be making a gin and tonic today, but I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more interesting than just gin and tonic. I mean, a little bit more interesting, we'll see. Anyway, stay tuned. The gin and tonic was created maybe a little bit by, by accident in the mid 19th century when the British took governance of India. To fight off malaria while in those warmer climates, they were given something called quinine. And quinine, if you're not familiar with that, is something that you extract from the cinchona tree and the cinchona tree grows in South America. So earlier, the Spaniards, when they were in South America, they realized that the indigenous people were using the bark from the cinchona tree to fight off malaria or, or fevers or other illnesses. This was in the early 17th century. So back to the Brits now. Quinine by itself is super duper bitter. So to make that more palatable, they mixed it with water and sugar, and then it didn't take them long before they started adding their beloved gin in there. And there you had it, the gin and tonic. I don't know exactly the story behind how the lime got in there, but the lime, adding lime to it, I mean, aside from the acidity to balance out the sugar, it also fought off scurvy, which was a big deal when they were traveling from Great Britain to India. That's it, that's my little story. It's my little story for you. Do, 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 do. So for my gin and tonic today, I decided to infuse some gin with some tea and I'm using a sweet cinnamon spice, an herbal infusion swirling with warm sweet cinnamon and spicy star anise. All right, so I pre-prepped this and it's really easy to do. You grab some, pour some gin in, into a glass, just the same way you make some tea and you infuse it for a little bit. And depending on how much gin you use, obviously, like you leave it in for longer or for a shorter period of time. I only did this much because I'm only making one cocktail. So this took me a couple of minutes. You just taste it as you go. Then we're gonna use some fresh lime juice, some demerara sugar. And if you don't have demerara at home, uh, you can just use regular simple syrup. This just has a little bit more flavor and that's why I'm using that. A couple of drops of Angostura bitters. And of course, tonic water. I'm using Fever Tree tonic water because I think it's really good. And if you were paying attention to my little story before, the name Fever Tree might make sense because there's quinine in this that they got from a tree that apparently cured fever, the fever tree, fever tree tonic. We're gonna make this really fancy gin and tonic and, and build it in a big wine glass like this. This is a Bordeaux glass, but if you have a burgundy glass, the big rounder one, you can use that as well. Or, I mean, if you want a regular highball, you can do that too. But I think this is gonna be really pretty. So we're gonna start with a couple of drops of Angostura bitters. So I have it in a little bit of a dropper here because I really just want a little bit. And if I start using the dasher, it might be a little bit too much. But if you don't have one of these, um, just be careful when you put the angster in there. We're gonna do half an ounce of fresh lime juice. quarter ounce of your um, demerara sugar, or if you have simple syrup. And two ounces of your tea infused gin. I'm gonna get some ice for this, and especially now if you're using a glass like this, be really careful when you're putting the ice in there. Now when I have the ice in there, I like to give this just a little bit, a little stir. go and then all we need is tonic I used to work in a nightclub about four and a half ounces of this I'm not really gonna measure it because it's also up to you how much tonic you want in your in your drink and now here comes the best part you, you since this has cinnamon and star anise in the infusion I'm gonna garnish it with a little cinnamon stick, a couple of star anise, 
And just because I think it looks good, I'm gonna put some orange slices in there as well. There it is. My little seasonal tea infused gin and tonic. This is so interesting because I actually really like this. And you're saying he actually likes it? Well, the thing is, I don't like gin and tonics. I've never ordered a gin and tonics in my entire life, ever. I once had a friend order it for me and I had to give him the cocktail because I can, I can drink it. And I can drink pretty much anything, but I just never got into gin and tonics, so what can I tell you? Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I really hope you try this and if you do, let me know. You know, let me let me know if you use another tea or um, whatever you do. I mean, this is just one little formula that you can do, adjust it to your liking, and um, uh, let me know what you think. All right, I uh, I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Two thumbs up to you, all of you, and that's it. I'll see you soon. Bye -bye.